calling in my Soul Tribe family. I'm back with another video, and today we are doing a full walkthrough of the underwater vocal session. If you guys aren't familiar with the song Underwater, here's a little clip. And I'll follow you, I'll follow you the night. Cause I can't fight no longer. I'll keep swallowing, I'm swallowing my pride. And I'll admit I'm wrong the wrong. This is an amazing production by Kashmir and Reed Stefan. And Reed actually posted a full walkthrough on the production of his Ableton session already on his channel. So make sure to check that out as well. Now let's get into Pro Tools where we recorded and mixed my vocals. The first thing that you guys might notice is that we split our instrumental into four groups. That is the kick, drums, bass, and all the other instruments in the song. This basically just allowed us to do any last minute adjustments on the volumes of each section before we sent it out for mastering by Luca Predalesi. Aside from volume, the only actual mixing that we did in Pro Tools was this gain automation on the sub. If we zoom in here, we'll see that we dipped the volume at every kick drum, basically creating a side chain effect. And as we zoom out, you can see we basically just copied that throughout the whole song. All right, so now let's get into the vocals. Since I wanna to move top to bottom, let's start with this red channel right here. As you can see, there's nothing on it, but what's in it is actually really important. So let's change the view to playlist, and you'll see that I have all of my takes living here. This is one of the major reasons why I love recording in Pro Tools because of this playlist feature. I actually really love the fact that it's different colors for each take because when I'm in my comping process, I'll know exactly which take I'm using. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that my lead consists of multiple different colors. That means I comped from multiple different takes. This first one looks like a demo vocal take that I recorded originally in Ableton because we actually wrote the song in Ableton as Reed was building out the track. It's normal for us to start the production in Ableton and then record the vocals in Pro Tools. So why don't we take a listen to this demo vocal? I'm curious to hear what it sounds like. Pull me in my shallow eyes And now I'm falling deeper this was basically a scratch idea for me to take it into Pro Tools to do my final performance of it. Sometimes I'm able to get it right away, especially on some of the easier songs when I'm just rapping or it's more of just a spoken thing. For more difficult songs like this, I like to do a lot of takes because this is the first time I'm actually singing the song. So I don't know how I wanna sing it. So it's important for me to do a lot of exploration and a lot of experimentation when I am singing these songs so I know and I can play play with different ways of saying the words or doing the rhythms or singing the notes. So that's enough about this playlist here. Let's take a look at my actual vocal setup. Let's focus on the lead first. I like to take a lot of time and do a lot of details in my recordings because I want it to be represented and perfected in the best way possible. So that's why you see all of these little edits here. Each color, like I said before, means that it's a different take. So you can see here, I even edited the same phrasing with two different takes for a different word. So if I zoom in a little bit further, you'll start to notice some cuts in the vocal. These are edits of me just like turning down the volumes of the breaths and the S's, T's, things like that. If you watch my other videos, this is something that I go over all the time. This is basically just cleaning up your vocal and getting it ready to mix. It's also really important to keep your session organized. I have everything labeled up here, verse, pre, chorus, so on and so forth. Uh, this is a basic pop structure, so it's a lot easier when you are mixing your vocal to have everything labeled out in this way. As you can see, I don't have any doubles or background vocals on this first verse here. That's something I typically do. I like to keep the focus on the lead, and I introduce my full stack on my chorus. Even my first pre doesn't have any stacks. Why don't we go ahead and take a listen to the full verse and pre. You pull me in with shallow eyes And now I'm falling deeper You wanted me to sacrifice And I was over eager yeah, You told me I was your only lover You're such a liar What about the others? And I don't want this all to be over so take me under, ooh, underwater 
anything in the background would have been distracting to the lead. This is a very in-your-face, emotional vocal, and so I wanted all of the focus to be on that. Moving on to the chorus, my first introduction to background vocals are actually these O's. <sighs> So I have a lead O, but once again, I just duplicated the channel and I have a completely different vocal chain on this because of the fact that it is a different style. It's there to support the lead vocal. It's not actually the lead. Once again, let me play this. There's a lot of reverb, there's a lot of delay, and I have, let's see, one, two, three, four stacks underneath that lead. This lead here has two doubles, so let me solo my doubles with the lead so you guys can hear what that sounds like. And I follow you, I follow you so I feel like I get this question a lot. People ask me, do I re-record my doubles or do I just copy and paste my lead twice underneath it. The answer is that you have to always re-record your doubles because you will run into phasing issues. All of the takes would basically just cancel each other out and it would sound all phasey and just bad in general. So you always want to re-sing your doubles. So basically these doubles are here to support the lead, make it sound a little bit bigger. This is something that I always do on my hooks, my choruses, and I feel like it's really effective. All right, let's go down to our harmonies. Harmony left, harmony right. If you haven't noticed already, I've mentioned it a couple times, but once again, I have two takes of each layer. So I have a left and a right. Over here, you can see where I panned it, 100% left, 100% right on these doubles here. And then as I move down to my harmonies, I pan them at different percentages, like 70% here, 81% here. You don't want to hard pan everything. You want your mix to sound wide and as full as possible and a trick to do that is by panning them at different levels. All right, let's hear what these harmonies sound like. This first harmony is just you, you and then the second one I always like to utilize the one note harmonies because if you have a busy melody like I have here, you can probably find one note that works without it being distractive or obstructing the lead. Why don't I just solo my harmony so you guys can get a better listen to this. Let's keep moving on and see what other harmonies I got here. So basically another one note harmony. I always like to have all frequencies in my mix when it comes to harmonizing. So I always try and do either a high octave, a high harmony, I have the lead, I have a low harmony, uh, an even lower one, the low octave. The possibilities are really endless. And for a song like this, I thought it was appropriate to do a lot of harmonies. Let's keep going. Fight no longer. Okay, so for these lower harmonies, I actually belted them. Let's keep going. And I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on for light. Okay, so it sounds like I actually have little altar boy going here as well. And for this, we pitch it down an octave and we form it, shifted it to basically support the deepness and give it a little extra oomph in the mix. Let's hear what all of these parts sound like together, just acapella. And I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on for life. Awesome. So that's basically how I stacked the chorus. All right, let's hear what these stacks are down here. When you're vocal producing, remember, you don't always have to use words when you're recording something that could be a cool part. For example, these hums. So they're not super loud. They're just there in the background to kind of follow the chord progression and give it a little bit extra support. These are perfect if you're looking for a background vocal that is not distracting, just something cool and a little bit of ear candy. Now I wanna just listen to my harmonies with the track. So let me mute my lead. This will give you guys an opportunity to hear how the harmonies are working within the music. <laughs> It 
it sounds like I have an entire choir behind me when it was just me layering my own voice. Moving on to my second verse. Let's take a listen. Cause we're underwater. You know so well the words to tell. Just like a wave, it breaks me. So unlike the first verse, my second verse has a bunch of background vocals and ad libs added to it. I felt like since we were picking up the intensity of the production, I felt like it was only right to also pick up the intensity and keep the vocals moving. And the way that I do that is by adding backgrounds and ad libs. <laughs> And that's a perfect example of just filling in the gaps. You also hear me singing ad libs on the bottom here. Let me uh, solo these. Bass me up. Bass me up. Oh. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of different types of ad libs you can do as well. That breaks me up. So I did the uh, as an additional melody to give it something slightly different than what the first verse had, which was nothing. And then these ad-libs are just sounds. Oh, I'm living oh. hell, but without you I can't breathe. It's all you can also notice that the mix in my ad-libs is a lot more washed out. There's a lot more reverb, delay. That is because it's simply there to support the lead and give an extra element. You don't want it to compete with it. And I follow you, I follow you. Once again, I just copy and pasted my hook, and that leads me to my final ad lib section, which sounds like this. So I basically just vamped on this last section and I experimented with different types of ad libs melodies here. The only stack that I have is on this section here. Since it was a repeat of a line in the chorus, I just copy and pasted the background vocals and then I changed the lead melody to make it a little bit more intense. So hanging on for life. And then with this last line, I left it completely solo. I wanted it to be incredibly vulnerable and soft and emotional and subtle section to end it off. And that basically concludes our stacking and arrangement section. Now we're gonna go through all the plugins in my vocal chain. The first plugin in my chain is always real-time autotune. This one is my autotune of choice. I don't know why, I just feel like it sounds best on my voice. I usually have it set to about 30 or 20 retune speed and there's nothing else fancy going on here, so. The next plugin is Vocal Rider. This basically just levels out the volume before going into the vocal chain. You pull me in with shallow eyes and now I'm falling deeper. The next plugin is on my lead sum. It's lo-fi, and we're basically just using the distortion knob as a preamp. This just makes it sound a little bit grittier. This is a stock plugin in Pro Tools, or you can get it as a third-party plugin. Next, we have Arvox. This is my go-to vocal compressor. You wanted me to sacrifice, and I was over eager. Yeah. Next, I EQ my voice with Pro-Q3. And if you actually sign up for my email list on my website, you will receive free vocal presets for FabFilter. So definitely check that out after. Here, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just doing a low cut. And this is being followed up by the FabFilter DSer. It's on me, I was your only lover. You're such a liar. What about the others? Now we're moving to our parallel compression. This is basically just doing an extreme compression that's being blended with the dry vocal. 
and then another EQ that's low cutting our compression. This just helps it feel a little bit brighter. And I don't want this all to be over. So take me under, ooh, underwater. And that concludes my dry vocal chain. This is where I start adding effects. As you can see, this channel has eight sends and they're all different effects. That leads me to come down here. I have a long, medium, and short reverb in the purple channels. My long reverb is Valhalla Shimmer. And you can see before all my reverbs, I have a de smoothing it out. And on this long reverb, I even have a distortion going in. An H delay is here to add pre-delay to our reverb. Moving on to our medium reverb, we use a plugin called EMT250. This is by UAD. You see me using this plugin a lot in my console app as well. And again, a de going into this reverb. Moving on to my small reverb, I'm using the Verb Suite Classics. And again, a de to keep it from sounding too bright. Let's see what it sounds like with all these reverbs combined. <laughs> Now let's move on to the delays. And if you've used my stock templates, specifically the Pro Tools one, you will recognize this layout. Exactly like our reverbs, we have a de and distortion going into our delays. And I have it organized here from long to short delays. And kind of how I was explaining the type of background vocals and ad libs throughout the track to kind of tell the story a little bit more, I always like to have different delay styles and timing because I want to automate those delays to specifically fit that section. So I have a full bar delay with H delay. And down here I have V delay as a half note. I have V delay as a quarter note and another one doing an eighth note. And these all get automated. Moving on, I have a slap delay, one that's mono and one that's stereo. Just to give you guys a better listen to what the delays sound like, I'm going to mute my reverb some and play this with just the delays going. Below my delays, I have my two special effects, either pitching my vocals up or down. To pitch my vocal down, I have Little Alter Boy going into a stereo splitter and Valhalla Room Reverb. And for the moments that I have my voice pitched up, I also have Little Alter Boy going into Valhalla Room. Now below this, I have an all effects sum where I can mute all of my effects at the same time. As you can see here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Um, this happens throughout the song a couple times, and I'll show you what it sounds like. Under, ooh, <sighs> so this mute was specifically used to cut off the echoes before the chorus began. It's really nice to give people a little bit of a dry vocal before a part with a lot of effects. Now we have finally made it to our dry vocal sum, and it's just one plugin, CLA Vocals. So there's kind of a meme that People make fun of this plugin because it's so easy to sound good, but that's actually the reason why I love using this and I encourage you to use it. So if you wanna check out my settings, this is how I like to use it. This is basically processing all of my dry vocals into one group. And then the signal gets sent to the next channel down, which is my acapella wet. And this is how my effects get combined with the dry vocals. This is the CLA-2A. It's a very transparent compressor and this is exactly why I'm using it as my final plugin. The only automation that I'm doing here are my final volume adjustments. So that concludes our vocal chain. And down here we have a limiter. Like I said before, we had the song mastered by Luca Predilesi, so it was properly mastered through his desk. For the time being, this is a great option for a master in your session. It's always important to include some sort of master chain, so when you do get your final master back uh, from a professional or whoever, you're not surprised at what it sounds like. I really hope you guys enjoyed this full walkthrough of my vocal session for my song Underwater. If you haven't heard it yet, I highly recommend listening to the song. It's available on all platforms. I just released an official music video for it as well. So check it out. I'm super proud of it. And if you are interested in any of the products that I have to offer, just check out imcara.com. I have vocal templates up there. I have a new product called Cara for Waves, a vocal preset in Studio Rack using the Horizon bundle and a lot 
lot of courses. Thank you so much, Soul Tribe, and I'll catch you in my next video. Sigh. <sighs>